the control head, uh, as you see, we're using a, a Yaesu FT8800. Uh, the control head is removable by uh, uh, activating uh, this little uh, button on the side over here. Um, we'll show you uh, a little bit more about it. Uh, top uh, left picture, you can see uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the little uh, release. You push the release uh, from uh, uh, the front towards the back panel of the radio. When you do, uh, you can see in the, uh, the right uh, photo uh, on top, uh, the uh, front panel will slide to the left. Um, as it uh, slides to the left, it will disengage from the front of the radio, and you can see it uh, disengaged uh, uh, in the bottom two pictures. There will be about a three or four inch uh, a long piece of uh, uh, connecting cable uh, that uh, does unplug from both the radio and the control head. Um, uh, it looks like a, a standard uh, telephone uh, RJ45 connector and uh, in the go kit is the uh, remote uh, extension cable uh, so you can uh, mount uh, the, uh, the control head either uh, on the top of the go kit or on an operating desk. Uh, we have a couple of uh, videos to show you the uh, removal and the reassembly of uh, the control head. And there we see the uh, uh, control head uh, being removed. Uh, we're going to replay that again. We're going to uh, uh, push the release on the left side of the radio towards the rear of the radio. And we're going to slide the uh, control head to the left. And here we are reassembling the control head. You push it from the left uh, towards the right and it snaps in place automatically. Uh, here we see the control head uh, removed from uh, the radio uh, being uh, readied uh, to be mounted onto a uh, heavy weight. This heavy weight is actually a uh, uh, an L uh, uh, mount. It's a, uh, a piece of steel, uh, heavy gauge steel, and we'll show you a close-up uh, of it. We're going to turn it upside down for you in a little bit. And uh, on the bottom of this uh, uh, L bracket is a, uh, um, a little protector so we don't scratch the table. It also uh, keeps it from sliding on the table. Um, uh, we see uh, the uh, um, the mounting uh, uh, receptor for the control head uh, that will be attached uh, with Velcro to uh, the Velcro on the, uh, uh, the steel uh, weighted bracket. And we see the uh, uh, long uh, extension cord uh, for the uh, remote head. Um, uh, here we're preparing to uh, attach the uh, control head to the um, uh, the weight uh, the weighted uh, uh, bracket. Uh, we note there is the receptacle for the uh, extension cord. This little plug right over here will plug into here on one end and into the radio on the other end. Um, here we see the cord uh, going into the little fitting. And uh, once the cord is in, uh, we align it up into the little slot uh, to uh, keep it uh, uh, out of the way so we can attach it to the little plastic uh, mounting assembly. And there it is getting ready to go onto the assembly. Uh, there it is snapped onto the assembly and then it's attached to uh, the uh, mounting, uh, uh, the desk mounting weight, uh, the, uh, this little red uh, matrix. Uh, the reason why we did that again is so when you pull on the microphone, you don't have the control head uh, following you across the desk. Uh, this uh, heavy gauge steel, uh, as you can see here, 
um, we'll, uh, we'll keep it in place with this uh, anti-skid uh, uh, material on the bottom of it. Uh, being that uh, many shelters have uh, rather poor lighting, uh, we've in, uh, included a 12-inch uh, uh, tall uh, gooseneck desk lamp in the kit. Um, it uh, runs on 110 volts and uh, we uh, have plans to modify it uh, and turn it into a 12 volt uh, uh, lamp also. Um, audio adapters, uh, we have a short extension cord that uh, is left plugged into the rear of the FT8800 all the time so you don't have to reach around and try and find the uh, jack um, uh, to plug it in. Uh, we've included a Y splitter to allow for uh, two audio outputs and uh, being that uh, most um, iPod style uh, earphones are stereo uh, you would only uh, have a sound in one of the two earphones without a mono to stereo adapter so that's included in the kit and uh, we use uh, disposable uh, iPod style uh, uh, cheapy earphones uh, for the uh, scribe or logger or uh, uh, assistant that would be uh, sitting at the operating desk. Uh, these little uh, inexpensive uh, two or three dollar uh, uh, earphones uh, can be uh, uh, disposed of uh, when uh, they're done uh, being used. Uh, building the Go Kit, uh, we used a couple of different um, uh, matrixes to assemble the equipment onto. Uh, here you can see in the bottom right uh, photo a metal matrix. It's a perfed uh, board or sheet of steel that uh, we selected initially because of our concern for uh, airflow. Uh, we uh, later learned that that wasn't necessary uh, and uh, here again you can see the uh, uh, the perf board uh, uh, with the equipment being mounted on it uh, uh, in a subsequent go kit we decided we would use uh, Lexan uh, from tap plastics and the reason for this decision was that uh, um, after completing the first go kit, we uh, checked the uh, uh, internal temperature of the uh, Pelican case uh, with it uh, fully sealed and uh, determined that the inside uh, temperature uh, with the power supply and battery charger running 24-7 uh, only seemed to raise uh, uh, about 7 degrees uh, above the uh, uh, external temperature. And that uh, proved to us that uh, internal temperature was not going to be a, a factor and auxiliary fans uh, to uh, move air into and out of the uh, Pelican case uh, was no longer a concern. Um, uh, here we are assembling uh, the uh, uh, power supply. We're using a Samlex 23 amp uh, power supply. Uh, uh, 110 volts uh, in for 13.8 volts out. Uh, we uh, have a rig runner and the uh, 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 PG40S uh, charger conditioner. Um, you can see them uh, again here being laid out on the uh, board and the uh, radio um, uh, FT8800 being attached to the board. And all of these items attach to the uh, inside uh, of the Pelican case, as you saw earlier. We'll have some close-ups for you uh, in a moment. Um, 